what's up YouTube welcome to my second video I'll be making today and today's video I'm gonna answer this question because a lot of people ask me how I farmed all my currency and mage blood by day three so this is gonna be a quick little primer on how I approach the league start and going into the league star I was planning on mostly playing in a group but I was pretty much just gonna go solo and I was gonna progress my atlas I was gonna do my own thing and then later on, we were going to team up and then I was going to try becoming an MF caller and trying out some group magic finding for the first time ever in a league start scenario. Well, we all know how that turned out as Empyrean, I think, has already quit the game in a record amount of time. So magic finding in a group is pretty much dead and I actually ended up making more currency solo by many, many times compared to my group. And I'm going to go over all of the different methods I chose to do. Because going into it, I didn't really know exactly what I was going to be pretty much trying to accomplish. As I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Because I didn't really have a set in stone currency money making method. As I didn't really know how good the lead mechanic was. And it turns out the lead mechanic, I think I did one lake total. And I did the one lake and it was, just felt awful. It felt like it was a waste of time. All the time you spend doing the lakes or touching the tablet with your little hands could better be spent progressing your atlas, finishing it as fast as possible, and choosing a currency money-making method that can actually generate you more than one like chaos per 20 minutes you spend in the lake or something like that. So my main goal was always to progress the atlas as fast as possible, and I was going to reevaluate and see... How the league was shaping up to be. I mean, it could have been that the league could have been amazing. It could have been that the lakes was just going to be sh like showering me with currency and golden stuff all over me. But it turns out the lake was dry and it was terrible. So in the past, I mainly do simulacrums and deli orbit maps pretty much because they are hard and they're fun to do. And the interrogation is usually worth a lot. And a lot of the cluster jewels and simulacrums are also worth a lot. And then eventually, I was planning to transition my character, as I, as I said, to a magic fine caller to play with my friends, and that was a disaster. So midway through, I did try a few currency money-making methods. It was like the claw crafting and stuff like that. I realized this character was actually batshit crazy for invitations, and this is just going to be a little bit of a demonstration for how it really looks like. So this is what I realized that I should probably be doing. So I have 885% quant invitation. And let's just say the stuff just dies really fast. Like, I don't even know like, if I'm doing anything special, but you also die sometimes. So, but without dying, um, it wouldn't be as fun, right? But basically, the invitation you can do like insanely high quant on the invitation, and it's not really that long. Like it really depends on how tanky you build the character. But sometimes the mods are really, really bad, as you can see here. And I'm pretty much having to kite around and deal with it. But I just wanted to show you the loot that ends up dropping. And each one of these elder maps were probably like 10 to 14 C. And so it wasn't really like that insane of a investment. But I never really failed any of them. I did fail one of them purely because I think I ended up putting... 200% AoE and then like another 150% boss AoE and this was on an elder one and I also rolled monster haste and the boss pretty much just ended up killing me instantly without any animation showing up and it was just taking up the entire area so as you can see here you finish one of these writs and then you get nine splinters which is pretty much a full maven's writ and then you also get some orb of conflict orb of makings and a lot of times it also drops like what's it called a couple elder maps and this time it didn't but you can see here the character was really really profitable to do and it was really good to do the invitations so early on for the currency strat most of my money did come from picking up imperial claw places and slamming essences on them i probably made around like 30 plus divines probably 40 maybe just from slamming essences on imperial claws and this is pretty much because you're ahead of the curve no one else is really doing this because they don't have access to high level bases like 82 bases and they also can't kill the essence mods because they're still stuck in the campaign and also even if they are a map some of the mobs are extremely extremely hard to kill so you pretty much just spam essence and then you pretty much craft any lightning damage fire damage or attack speed 
And back then, a claw like even like this would sell for like 20, 20, 25 chaos because you just craft on fire damage or cold damage. Even a bad claw like two, three hundred LED DPS was worth like twenty five chaos. And then occasionally you would hit some good ones like three, four hundred DPS and sell for like two to three divines. I think the best one I had was a five hundred DPS claw with crit and two attack speed, and it ended up selling for like five divines. Then this one here that I had was four hundred. LED DPS, and then I was also buying some Fracture Claws even and crafting it out and it was also super super valuable I was able to get some attack speed Fracture Imperial Claws for super cheap purely because a lot of people were generating them with Arch Nemesis mod so I also another strat I decided to do was I enjoy doing Betrayal and I knew that Devouring Diadem was going to be a highly sought after item and I really like getting XP, and I do think that the beginning, the XP bit. push is kind of fun before the groups get into five ways and just spam it. But basically, I was pretty much number two, number three overall in XP for a while. And it's pretty much because I just stayed, uh, well, I just stayed doing a lot of Betrayal, and Betrayal actually generates a lot of XP. But the main reason I decided to do that was because I knew the item, the Devouring Diadem, was going to be really, really expensive early on. And I know that it's not really that rare of a drop. So I decided that I was just going to farm this item. And you can see here, early on, it was around an insane amount of money. I think it was like three or four divines or something early on. So you could have made a lot of money. And I think I ended up dropping three or four devouring diadems. And while I was doing Betrayal, I also got lucky and found two Paradoxicas. And this is extremely, extremely lucky. I've done many SSF runs to 100 in the past and spam Betrayal safe houses and I've only found like one total in each run. So getting two this early on was extremely lucky. And also I got lucky with the new Arch Nemesis 6 link modifier. This is one of the changes that's actually pretty good in the league. And it wasn't, it was pretty surprising. It ended up dropping like five or four six links each. And each six link at the time was going for like one divine or more. And some of the better bases, like a Sadist Garb or Varnish Coat, ended up selling for like 1.5 divines, especially if you threw an Essence of Greed on it. And that actually ended up being pretty good. And it ended up giving me 10 divines total. So if you can see here, 10 and then 20, 14 divines here, that's already 24, 30 is 54. And then like the Devouring Diadems was already like another. 10 or 15x so you can add it all up and this is already around like the cost of half a mage blood or uh, omniscience just from doing these currency money making methods that aren't even really that crazy investment so you might be wondering what i was doing for the atlas tree strategy and i pretty much decided to complete my strategy atlas before settling on any strategy and the number one thing i realized early on was that map sustain was going to be bad now map sustain is bad because the league mechanic, I was pretty much skipping all the time, and most people are pretty much skipping the league mechanic. And without the league mechanic in the game, you pretty much are missing a huge chunk of maps. Like Sentinels actually spawn packs of mobs, and it also gave the mobs that spawn an increased amount of quantity. So without that, it was a huge, huge problem. So I pretty much just focused on taking all of these connecting nodes early on. So each of these nodes makes it so that you have a chance for a monster in each of one of your maps to drop a connected map. So if you take all of these nodes and you kill the boss, it's pretty much guaranteed that you'll always get an adjacent map back. And this is something I actually learned while doing the, what's it called? While doing the race in Gauntlet. So basically I also ended up taking all of these shaping nodes until I got the Void Stones and that actually helped out the map drops quite substantially. And I also ended up taking a lot of Betrayal nodes. And Betrayal does give a lot of XP. It gives you the Unveiled Crafts. And if you watch my earlier Build Diary video, you'll notice that all my gear is pretty much from Betrayal. So I took a lot of Betrayal nodes. Also ended up taking all of the Essence nodes over here. And lastly, I ended up taking the Shrine nodes because Shrines makes the maps a lot more fun. And we're all about the fun per hour. And lastly, I have all of these nodes allocated for farming the invitations and these nodes for the map boss dropping conqueror maps and elder maps and i could have taken these but i realized the synthesis maps were not really worth that much and i also found three cortexes total so that's pretty much the strategy i just chose betrayal essence and then i chose those that allow me to run t16 maps speed run them to drop shaper elder and conqueror maps
So then I had to pretty much decide a currency strategy that I was going to do for the rest of the time after I finished my atlas. And I realized my character was pretty strong at doing the Shaper Elder Elder Slayer invitation. So I could fully farm a Maven's Writ every single time I did like four maps. Now, as you can see here, I was able to finish this pretty much fully off. And this thing allows you to get like 180 to 200 percent quant, and it just drops so many items in the invitation, as I saw, as I showed you earlier. And after I ran through all my guardian maps, and since I had a large stock of guardian maps, that was pretty much just speed running my atlas. I was running Dunes, and Dunes is actually a pretty good map because it actually drops the Imperial Legacy card, which gives you a six link bow. And I think I created two sets of those, and I used the Dread Essence and made some. I guess explosive arrow bows for people. It was a pretty good profit. So after you finish all of that, you have to go set up a buy order on TFT. So I went to go to the want to buy bulk map tab and spot all of the Shaper Elder and Elder Slayer maps I could possibly get. And then after I ran all of the invitations, you would just have a bunch of what's it called? You would have a bunch of maps left over. So I have a bunch of Maven's Ritz. So I did some Void Stone carries. And then I ran all of my elders, and I also got a lot of Watcher's Eye. I think the best Watcher's Eye I ended up getting was a Hatred Crit Watcher's Eye. So I had a lot of different Watcher's Eye I was trying to buy or sell from doing all of the elders. So in the end, I would have to... I have so many Shaper runs left, but I hated doing Shaper, so I refused to do it. So I just bought the Fragment of Shape and Fragment of Knowledge, and I offered up a Maven Carries and... Uber Elder carries and these were pretty profitable that I think I was charging at like 40 to 50 chaos each and from the notable drops from the bosses I got Awaken Multi-Strike, Awaken Spell Cascade, like 15 to 20 pairs of RF boots which are all like 3 to 4 divines each when I sold them. 1.79% crit hatred watches I was definitely the best and without the divine changes 1.79% is actually extremely extremely good. And like I said, overall, that pretty much adds up to a mage blood and way more. I did buy a headhunter or help contribute to a headhunter for my group. And boss carries are pretty insanely profitable. And you might be wondering, is it a streamer only day? And it kind of is if you're lazy, but you can definitely sell boss carries on the TFT boss carry want to sell service if you undercut by like 5 to 10 chaos. So I wasn't really charging like full full price. And I could have charged more, but I definitely kept it low, like 40 to 50 chaos each. And if you aren't a streamer or you don't have high rep on TFT, you can pretty much just lower it to 30 chaos. And you'll pretty much just get flooded with people wanting to buy boss carry services. People don't really care that much. And they just want their voice zone done for as cheap as possible. And I felt like I got pretty lucky overall of the drops, especially the two paradoxicas at the beginning. And finding Awakened Multi-Strike and Spell Cascade were probably the best Awakened Gems you could possibly find. Maybe besides uh, Awakened GMP. And I do think this main currency strategy works because I'm able to progress through the game so fast. So I pretty much finished the campaign in 3.5 hours and I was almost done with all my Void Stones within 9 hours. And the only thing that stopped me from doing it faster was the map drop was just so, so terrible. And I did stay awake for 24 hours, two days in a row. So you might be wondering, is there any low barrier of entry currency strategies? And I do think the best low barrier currency strat barrier of entry currency strategy is just to run uh, what's it called? I'm not up to that just It's yet. just to run uh, essences. You take all of the essence nodes and then you do in low tier maps, and it should generate you a lot of money back. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope this gave you a little bit of an insight on how I approached the early game and late game for currency farming. And I didn't really go into the league with any sort of specific plan and I pretty much just winged it on the fly. And I did realize midway through that juice maps thing is completely dead because investing more into the map doesn't really give you more loot. Maybe one day the, the scarabs are probably going to tank in price. So it's really going to be hard to tell what exactly the new best currency money making method is going to be especially since simulacrums a lot of the profit was from exalted shards and what's it called and also yeah exalted shards are really important and simulacrums may still be very very good depending on the price of simulacrums so i don't really know what the best currency money making method will be we'll see how it goes profit crafty is always a thing and so is flipping 
and price fixing. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, ex exalts, and divines and lakes than me. And see you next time. Bye.